sludge Nazi these Decepticons before? Nazi again either, because we dynamite them to pieces! Hello everybody, welcome to another cartoon commentary. Joining me today is T-Man from T-Man978 YouTube channel. How you doing? I'm doing good. First time chatting with you and I uh, dig your uh, reviews, chill Thank reviews. You. I strive to be chill too, so <laughs> hopefully we don't put our uh, listeners to sleep tonight. Although that might be a good thing if they're trying to get to sleep. It might work a little better than the melatonin. Yeah. Somebody told me that um, I try not to be ASMR, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I had never heard of that term um, before I started YouTubing, and then I kept mm -hmm. seeing it pop up. I'm like, what is this ASMR stuff? Like, I'm, I'm just a dude futzing around with a toy i don't yeah. get it but uh i take that more as a compliment these days now that uh, yeah. people get to have, like very vicariously enjoy this stuff through our hands i try to take it like that <laughs> so, i do they, they talk about my calming voice uh so we're doing heavy metal war today uh why did you want to pick this one for some reason it just called to me when you asked if i had a, a favorite episode that's one of the best that's for sure yeah Lots of uh, <clears throat> big, heavy-hitting action in this one. Dinobots and Constructicons are prominently featured in this one. And they're kind of in the background for how big their part is. You know, it's it's really all about Optimus versus Megatron in, uh, in one of the, the ultimate one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Those so... are my cluster bombs. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got it queued up, and uh, Asbro has, has he covered this time. Uh, so just hop on over onto their channel in another tab while you're listening to us here. It's actually on the Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel. It's called Heavy Metal War. I searched for he Heavy Metal War on YouTube. It was the first thing that came up. Uh, season 1, Episode 14, Hasbro Pulse. So we're all queued up at 000. I'm going to give you a countdown from 3. It's going to go 3, 2, 1, play. And when I say play, you press the play button. You ready, T-Man? Yep. Here we go. Three, two, one, play. Yeah. I never get tired of watching this. I love that first season uh, theme. Yeah. The composer is really one, one of the unsung heroes of the Transformers lore. He added so much to uh, to the show. And as far as the first season, that the animation of the characters is perfect. Top notch. In a time of very fun, happy cartoons, Transformers came along and it's just so heavy. It was uh it was like an adult show just disguised as a toy commercial show. They're calling this episode 14, but I remember it being 16. Nah, those are always up for debate. We got these doozers running around. Someday, uh, one day, someone described these guys as doozers from Fra Fraggle Rock, and I can't unsee it now. The uh, humans. I'm, I'm gonna think about that now too. <laughs> With the <clears throat> yellow boots and the helmets. I love how all the construction guys are all the same in this show. Hey, what is going on here? <laughs> and I never knew what Spike and Sparkplug did because they just had the hats on. I thought they were oil rig workers the first time we see them, and then they never worked again. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, first appearance of the Constructicons, I think. Yeah. Look, it's the G2 Constructicons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never noticed that before. That was my first Constructicon set. I didn't get to have the originals, but in G2, I, I got to get the the uh, yellowy uh, orange version, and uh, yeah. it did the trick. When that came out, I was like late teens, so um, I used to look at it really hard at KB, but something couldn't let me buy it back then. I get it. Yeah, I was too old for toys then also, but even then I was... Um, you know, I was dealing with unfinished business. Like, oh, I wanted this so bad, and I, I couldn't get it 10 years earlier. 
<laughs> Watching these again, you see how nice they are to the humans and whatnot. Yeah, he could have just popped his head right off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Burton. He uh he's a man of a thousand voices. I believe that was him. Also the voice of Spike. And, and Cad Bane. Yeah, Cad Bane on uh Clone Wars too. Oh yeah, I was shocked to read that. What a scheme. I want to challenge Optimus, but I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to use all the powers of every Decepticon to beat him. Mm -hmm. I, I like how they announce their selves. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the moments where they, they do a roll call for all the new guys. It's like, uh, Mom, but quiet. I got to learn these names. <laughs> I always forget one of their names every time I try to remember. Maybe if it was only five of them. Yeah, it was different that uh, there were six of them. Oh, look at that. That sky warp right now. Is that an... Okay. <laughs> but Is that an Star animation Streams, Yeah. <laughs> I want to see... It's, it's another one later, but they might have fixed it. Those are fun to find in these episodes. In fact, um, when, right before Megatron and Starscream started talking... They were just standing there. I think I, I watched something else that there was supposed to be a frames of animation that they don't show in these like edited in these um updated episodes. So I just noticed something about the arc lodged in the volcano today because I was looking at some pictures of uh, the Autobot arc, the new toy. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, how would you display that like shoved into a mountain as a diorama? And then I thought it's shoved into a mountain on an angle. But when they go in, everything is perfectly level. How is that possible? Cartoon logic. Because I, I know they created a new floor to walk in under the arc, but are they never in? 99% <laughs> of the time, it works 50% of the time. Yeah, 25%. <laughs> oh, he's so noble sounding. Yeah, he's starting to drop even this early in the show. He's dropping the John Wayne twang and getting the more noble sound. And those uh first three, he's totally John Wayne. Yeah, I like them. I liked when he talked like a normal person instead yeah, he's of a narrator. <laughs> he's doing his brother, he was imitating his brother, uh, Larry Colin. I think his name was a, a Marine. Yeah, he just went in there and and sounded like his brother. Well, and they don't suspect a thing. Yeah, well, you you go, Cliff Jumper. <laughs> we are trusting. You must always give the murderous, deceptive yeah. villain a chance to mm -hmm. redeem himself. Like, just look at the look on his face. Why would you trust him? Right. Uh, that's why we love Optimus. He came here by himself, so he's got to be trustworthy. That's actually <laughs> a good point. <laughs> now we cheat. <laughs> What's the most useless power you think he got in during this procedure? Hmm. Scavengers. Whatever is. <laughs> the fla flashing, I think he has. Ability to take high resolution pictures from a long distance. No, I never knew what Thundercracker did. Because he never so, did it. <laughs> that would be sound, right? He had some kind of a, like a sonic rumbling sound attack. Yeah, I just, I just assume from his name, Thundercracker. I hope at some point they make a series where Thundercracker and Skywarp are are actually use, useful, yeah, like a buddy detective show, like Hardcastle and McCormick. It's weird. Do you see how wide his helmet was at the bottom? Yeah. Maybe uh, Scavenger's self-doubt is the most useless <laughs> power he's 
downloading now. I will crush Optimus Prime. Possibly. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh, boy. He's enjoying that too much. <laughs> yeah, the bottom of his helmet is flared out really wide. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a mullet. Oh, and that's normal. Now, yeah, right away. It's weird. And the Decepticon symbol is kind of floating. Bad sticker application there. Yes. Jazz. I used to love those. The bumpers, yeah. To the Transformers. It'd be wild if he could merge, like take into Devastator's power and just be able to become oh, yeah. a combiner with some of the other Decepticons. You know, did he actually? I didn't see them actually give up their powers. Oh, I don't think they did. Yes, because they got their own little side mission. Yeah, it was just the jets and Soundwave. In this episode, the vehicles look a whole lot like the toys. Mm -hmm. So, the scheme to fight Optimus isn't enough. And he's got it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a slam dunk win for him. Yeah. But in addition to that, we're also going to sneak in and cheat even more. <laughs> destroy their computer. Like he's just <clears throat> such a such a piece of crap. Even Spike's telling him, What are you doing? Why are you trusting right. this guy? It's going to be a fair battle, Spike. <laughs> yeah. I forgot um, Spike mentioned that, like John Cena in the Bumblebee movie. Like, they're called Decepticons. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's too bad Optimus didn't do the same thing. I'm anticipating Megatron will cheat. So as a preemptive <laughs> counter, <laughs> Trailbreaker's the first one in the machine. Sounds like you need a force field. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would have way more powers than Megatron, too. Yeah. Disappear uh, liquid. Yeah, nitrogen. that was an error right there. Ironhide transformed back into a, a van. <laughs> oh yeah, that that might have just been Ironhide glitching. <laughs> Does that all the time. It's funny how many more Autobots there were toys than Decepticons, and they even right. it out in the show just by saying, "Yeah, but there's a thousand jets and reflectors, mm -hmm. but there's no drone Autobots." It's not like 50 hounds or bumblebees or anything like that. Well, maybe if they did that, um, the Netflix show would have made more sense. <laughs> he thinks reminding Megatron will uh, discourage cheating. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Let them watch, uh, too. I used to love this when he's petting rabbits. Petting them. Yeah, it's a very un undeceptical. Oh, look how big his chest is. Yeah, he's been working out. Get ready for the big fight. Working on the Bowflex. Like, oh, crap. Wow. This ain't right. That's <laughs> not a good start here. Ah. Worked a kink out of my back. Ouch. That's <laughs> <laughs> me. Right. <laughs> That's cool. Optimus shooting with his hand. I don't think I've seen that before. No, he's been yeah, watching usually, the robots. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that's a total awe in the side cannon shot out of Megatron, the way the toy is. Oh, Rumble. Like how they cut to every Decepticon who's like, me. <laughs> <laughs> This is awesome. Like yeah, that's, they didn't fix that error right there. <laughs> yeah, get him out and of there. This and one. Clones. But I was watching something that said in in the original airings, 
they actually did fix that. But when they put these videos together for DVD release, they didn't get the the, the copies that aired on TV. Oh, okay. I guess they were going for the highest quality master <laughs> or something. I don't know. Or they got lost to time. Yeah. I don't mind the errors. I mean, that's how it was when I originally saw it. It's like the Star Wars special editions. Just just give me the originals. I don't need the fixes. This part right here, this is the last time I remember hearing um Mixmaster talk. Ever? <laughs> <laughs> that I can think of. It was <laughs> tough when I was doing the Constructicons video. It was tough finding clips of all of them speaking. They don't get too many lines. You know, Prime's not... He's getting beat badly here, but he's he's not getting squashed in like five seconds. It's surprising how right. much of a fight he's putting up against basically the whole Decepticon army. Which, in wrestling terms, um, that's losing but going over, even though you're losing. It's like, shut up, Stars. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> they, if they would have had Blaster, he'd have been able to hear them. Yeah. Well, isn't there an Autobot with good hearing? Or like Bumblebee, I think. The espionage guy. I remember <laughs> maybe his file card says something about good hearing or I don't know, you think Hound maybe? Or Jazz. Yeah. Since Jazz was Blaster before Blaster came. Yeah. He can still stand. Is this the one where he has Huffer pull his trailer? I think so. Okay. Yeah, so he takes a blast in um, one of the first three episodes. Remember next to the uh, the yeah, Ruby Mines like, of Burma? That was episode two. And uh, I <clears throat> don't think Huffer pulls his trailer in that one. They're like, you're on your own, Optimus. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wouldn't let him. Now, this is one of the important moments for Optimus Prime in the cartoon where he's beaten and the Autobots are going, hey, let's even the score. And this is just pure honor right here. No. I lost and we're going home. It's funny seeing him hold that ion cannon the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> just like he's actually the toy holding the gun. Yeah. This episode goes well with Megatron's master plan. It's uh, both times Prime going, no, nope, we're out of here. Oh, here's the here's the reason why every Huffer toy must be compatible with Prime's trailer. <laughs> you know, I forgot looks, they actually had him in scale. <laughs> <laughs> looks so funny, this tiny little uh, tiny little truck pulling trailer it's a long neck on star screen oh yeah oh animation error prime's pulling the trailer mm. yeah i'm sure there's more than one studio working on this and they didn't really have the internet to communicate with each other yeah there's total gobots action going on here where you know, guys are just shooting with their hands or with their shovel. Just doing anything. Just imagination. That was the advantage of GoBots. You couldn't really lose their weapons because they didn't have any. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't like. <clears throat> I like that the Transformers actually had weapons. It felt more realistic. Ah, uh, here they are. The last line of defense. Remember us? I like that they weren't shown the whole episode until now. <clears throat> What's the saying? Uh, mess about, and you're going to find out. This was before Grimlock's head remodel. <clears throat> and they're doing something different with his voice, too. He sounds like he's gargling yeah. or something. Yeah. Which is cool. But They yeah, might have got rid of that in um, season two. Yeah, they sound very slow.
I love this line coming up. <laughs> Snarl, Snarl's like the witty one of the group. <laughs> he's just slightly faster and more quick-witted. <laughs> Maybe because he's one of the newer ones with Swoop. Yes. He and newer, Swoop always like, felt more smart. Yeah, like what newer? What is he, two weeks newer? <laughs> yeah. Cool. The Dinobots could shoot out of anything, too. Yeah, out of anywhere. Wouldn't be surprised if some one of their shoulders just shot or his belly. <laughs> Phase one. This is when everybody wanted the Dinobots to combine. First time, I believe, on the show. The first combiner we see in Transformers. Yeah. Devastator. This is before you had a visor. Mm. That's kind of cool seeing this giant devastator go against the Dinobots and not be a combiner versus a combiner. <clears throat> and they actually put up a pretty good fight against him. Well, not him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no, why, had, why are they doing the visor. Chuck Norris thing? <laughs> why are they attacking him one at a time? <laughs> well, I used to always love this part. Uh, a little too hot for him. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Devastated didn't have a visor, and then he had a visor right in the next scene. So I wonder if it went to Huffer's head and he started acting like the leader of the Autobots. <laughs> <laughs> Autobots transform and roll out. Ah, whatever. No. Oh. It's just opened up the way the toy opens instead of yeah. The, the way the Matrix opens. Yeah. yeah. I remember after seeing the movie when they would replay these old episodes and thinking, hey, you know what? The, the Matrix, is it in there? Especially the one right. where he's mortally wounded. And like, it's not in there, is it? Or when they chop him to pieces. That bugged me like crazy in the movie. I was like, where did the Matrix <laughs> come from? Because his was... chest was open and laser beak shot him directly in the chest in one episode. <laughs> this is a theory. Uh, I don't necessarily really believe this, but it's a possibility. Maybe it wasn't with him on Earth. Maybe he left it with Ultra Magnus on Cybertron. Oh, yeah. Possible. Or someone else. Now he doesn't have a visor oh, again. I love this thing. Can we get like a four foot tall, whatever this guy is? <laughs> Your Skyfire knockoff. They end it on a definitive win. Yeah, this is a squash. Right? How many times do they all fall in the lava? Yeah. <laughs> that would be a heck of a two-pack. Hound with like a four-foot-tall <laughs> hologram of that <laughs> translucent plastic. You know, but what? it's marketed as hound, right? With with hologram. They could have like a cellophane fold-out or something like that. That might be a better way to go, like a printout. Yeah, I saw pictures recently of the cardboard SDF one from Robotech, five feet long. The thing's amazing, even though it's cardboard. Wow. And even Just though you can me. fall, I mean, even though you can fly, you'll fall in the lava. And even though you can withstand a lot hotter temperatures than that, apparently. There are quite a few episodes of this uh, first season where it, it seems like it's over, right? Blows up in space. It's over. Falls into lava. It's over. Ship crashes into water. It's finally over. You know, I never thought about that. The Optimus, he really tried to kill him right there. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to put the mad dog down. I mean, he certainly <laughs> gave him enough chances <laughs> to... Yeah to straighten his life out but you know optimus is its last resort it's not he doesn't open with give me your face right <laughs> <laughs> now that flew by 
because they're like 20 it's only 23 minutes without yeah. commercials well actually that's a lot of episodes i think the shows now are 18 minutes yeah plus it's shorter now without the commercials when we were growing up they were 30 minutes because of all the commercial mm -hmm. breaks in them and that is heavy metal war that was fun yeah what was the highlight of the episode for you mm. just megatron using all the powers yeah <laughs> i like the decepticons every time he does anything the decepticons are going me <laughs> like they've been uh forced into doing something not completely selfish selfish and self-absorbed but they still got to have that little moment of you know get my glory now i do like the the line that, that you mentioned um snarl like not, not, see, not see again, again. <laughs> <laughs> we dynamite them to be <laughs> yeah yeah, I think they tried to make them talk like the Credible Hulk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just seemed like something he would say. Yeah, that's true. A really eclectic cast of Autobots. There's really uh, witty guys, smart guys, slow guys. And then just you got the Dinobots. Yeah. Panicky are, uh, guys. <laughs> yeah. Even the Decepticons. Um, there's some shows where the bad guys are just... I mean, ma <clears throat> mask really comes to mind. Um, they're kind of interchangeable. Other than the leader, they don't really have all that unique personalities. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of ca other cartoons, you know, me bad guy, basically. A lot of the Masters of the Universe characters are just the monsters are just, you know, dumb monsters. But nice. Transformers, each guy like Decepticon, you know, Soundwave was cool. Starscream was a nut job and treacherous and yeah and a jerk <laughs> yeah sky warp was pretty cool you know and and a little sinister and reflector yeah. was kind of a wimp you know and just rumble was like a, a goon total punk yeah, yeah. <laughs> rumble and frenzy mm -hmm. yeah that was a great one i wish um they i wish rumble and frenzy was were on more episodes together yeah, Frenzy, oh, whatever, Rumble, Purple, Red. The, well, as far as the cartoon, Rumble is blue and purple. <laughs> yeah, so that's how it's always going to be for me, regardless of what the toys mm -hmm. say. Like Frenzy will always be red to me, just because that's that's what I grew up with. That's what I saw over and over again. And But yeah, Frenzy made very, very few appearances. And it was funny when he does show up, it's just Rumble. The yeah. same voice, the same attitude. <laughs> There's like it's no like, difference. <laughs> he's it's like Zayma and Tomax. Like that's just Rumble's twin, and you're supposed to just ex accept it. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry about it. Like if you mix them up, it, it's not a big deal because it's basically the same guy. And um, Buzzsaw, Buzzsaw was like completely the same thing as Laserbeak. Laserbeak. Like, it was like what's the use? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember seeing much of Buzzsaw. I only remember one episode, but apparently there were two. Mm. It was an episode where they, um, the telescope thing came out of the, the ocean and they sent Buzz on a, a mission with Laserbeak. Okay. So it's I can't like, remember which one it was, though. It's not like he really adds anything. It's just basically, no. a, it's like a clone of, Buzz, uh, of uh, Laserbeak. Pretty much. I think he went and grabbed somebody and came back something like that yeah and it's like who the heck is buzzsaw <laughs> <laughs> i want to give the folks out there a, a shout out to your channel a link is going to be in the uh, video description t-man 978 transformers marvel legends mcfarland toys uh, fortnite <laughs> fortnite <laughs> freaking <laughs> everything if it's posable and looks cool it's i might buy it What's the most fun you've ever uh, had on a, one of your reviews? Because you've been doing it, you said since 2014, right? So you're uh, you're one of the old school YouTubers. I like to do video. Well, I I haven't done it much recently, but sometimes depending on the characters, I would like have an idea for a little skit to put in there. But whenever I would do that, like I would set up like a whole skit, put so much time and effort into it. And then that video will be the video that doesn't get that many views. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'm like, 
So I'll be sitting there after I piece together whatever like little skit that I did. I'll sit there watching it over and over and over again to myself and thinking it's great. And then that video will get <laughs> like no views. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I always feel like one thing leads to another though. Like you can't, you can't put a lot of, uh, time and effort into something and then judge its, its success based on the view count. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I learned that big time, uh, or, you know, it was reinforced for me big time on, uh, the uh, the visionaries video I did I did a video about the uh, unproduced year of Vig visionaries toys mm -hmm. actually I did I did part one of three I'm still planning on doing the other two but uh, all they had was prototype pictures of the uh, visionaries toys for 80s 88 I think it was so I grabbed the prototype pictures I could find all over the internet and I actually came up because none of this was actually made up back then so i came up with powers for them and poems you know because they they read a poem a to for their totem so i'd look at a guy and if he had like a fish type of thing i'd be like okay so his uh, power is this and he would recite this poem like the show had and that thing took me so much time to do and uh i didn't care like what views yeah. it got because i i was just like there it's there you know someone had to do it and i'm, I'm glad it exists yeah. visionaries right. second year no i'm gonna have to watch that because i don't remember visionaries at all it's it's something else there was a, a show a couple of years ago i forget what it was called maybe something like a revolution uh about like there's a worldwide emp and no technology works anymore on the earth so mm -hmm. we're thrown it's a, like a post-apocalyptic show but it's we're thrown back in the medieval times with arrows and swords and stuff. <laughs> well, Visionaries is the same deal. It's on a different planet, very similar to Earth, far, far in the future, I think. And the sun's aligned or something. Basically, it acts like a big EMP on the planet. And this super highly technologically advanced planet, the whole planet just goes dead for power. And then this dude comes out of a mountain. The age of magic has returned. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's got his orb and his spells and like everyone has to be magic users now. So it's like a combination wow. of uh, it's like Lord of the Rings and He-Man. You know, there's like there's tech and magic and but some guys, their power is to power an old vehicle, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Like my magical power is I can drive this car. So he's the only oh. one who can do it or fly a jet or something like that. Yeah, but I'm mostly definitely going to have to look up your video because I, I don't remember that at all. It's a fun line. It, it'll probably be familiar to me once I see it. Yeah, hopefully we get more. But yeah, check out, uh, folks, check out T-Man 978. And yep. uh, thanks for uh, joining me on a cartoon commentary, T-Man. No problem. It was fun. All right, folks. Hope you had fun. Nerd Mistake, everyone. Take care. So, yeah.